What is going on guys? Welcome back to Living Life Fast and the second podcast. We've got man like Jürgen. Go right, Ricky. The owner of JM Imports. How you doing, man? You right? Yeah, I'm good, mate. Are you? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Uh, obviously, just got you down. We've revealed your brand new McLaren 720S. And uh, I thought this is something we've been chatting about for what, about a year or two? Yeah. About doing a podcast, going into your story, because JM Imports is absolutely massive. And um, you film, sorry, you tune some of the fastest cars in the country. And I want to know where it all began. Always. So, um, firstly, do you want to introduce yourself? I mean, yeah, I just... so obviously, my name's Jurgen Valens. Um, yeah. I run and own a company called GM Imports. This year is our 20th year in business, which is year. a massive that's achievement a, in a, itself, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's a so, long yeah. time. And for, for anybody um, that isn't aware, uh, JM Imports is the company that built my GTR, so you've seen the 1900 horsepower GTR that I run, eight seconds flat, fastest zero to 60 in the, co- in the country. Still uh, today. Still the fastest, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, you built some absolute monsters. So let's go into where it began, Jürgen. What was you doing when you was, you know, a kid? Like, w- have you always been into cars? Like, you know, what was your family l- uh, life like? Um, my dad had cars when I was younger. I remember there was a picture of me. Um, I think it was a Pontiac Firebird. Okay. And I was like standing on the side of the wow. car. I had a big sort of, I can't remember what it was now. Was it, was it a Falcon or something or one of them, one of them big birds? Yeah, 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 with the big uh, spoiler. What, like the... What, what's the biggest bird you've got? Falcon Prey? Oh uh, man, you're asking the wrong guy, man. Yeah, it's an American car. <laughs> it's got a picture of it on the bonnet and I remember yeah, sitting, yeah. like there was a picture of me. Yeah. Obviously, I don't know if I still got the picture and I was just sitting there. Yeah. And Kane and my dad had some cars. Um, so, so it came from that really. Dad, yes, your dad was in car and future. In the cars, yeah. 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 Where did you, where, where are you from, Jurgen? So, um, I was born in South America. Obviously okay. Me, yeah, so I live in South America and Peru. Okay. Um, my mum's obviously lives there. Mm-hmm. Uh, my dad was obviously an oil rig worker and he worked there. He's obviously from Belgium, so he's European. Right. And obviously they met there. And then when I was nine, ten years old, I came to England. Right. So, so what's the reason yeah. you came to UK? Sorry? What's the reason you come to UK? Uh, obviously through my dad working. Okay. Um, so I came okay. to the UK with my dad and family. It's obviously as a kid, I had no choice really. Yeah, yeah. There was a story when Ellie went to Canada, but he chose Newcastle. He chose Newcastle. <laughs> I can't complain, but yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. it. You know, when you look back, you yeah. think, you know, Canada yeah, yeah. would have been nice, but. Yeah. Um, so, so you uh, went to school. What was it like? What was the change like being so in South America to When to I was come there, we went in English school. Yeah. Um, it was like a private school. Mm. Obviously, my dad was working on the like oil rigs, so there was um, like a, a section for like all the foreign workers in South America. So there was right. German, you know, Polish, Russian, whatever. They were all working in an oil rig and their families would go like to an English dedicated school. Mm-hmm. So we would go to school uh, for the workers, you know. Get into any trouble growing up? Like, yeah, I've been in some trouble, I think. Well, I think <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think every kid has, hasn't they? So, yeah, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm not a saint. So mm. um, obviously, you know, as you get older, you get wiser. And so, so all through school, like, was you just always into cars, like magazines and? I was into um, like buying, was it was a, I'm trying to think, Max Power and okay. Fast Car. And I used to look yeah. at the back of the magazine, see what was the fastest. I used to draw cars a lot as well. Right. So and uh, how old are you now, Jürgen? Just for 42. 42, yeah. yeah. Young 42. <laughs> <laughs> 42. Too young. Too young, yeah. yeah. So before you opened JM Imports, what was you doing? What was your lead up jobs? Did you work in anywhere or like Yeah, anything? so obviously before I started JM Imports, um, I was a CNC engineer. Okay. So we used to work at um, a local company to us that used to manufacture um, engine parts for Rolls Royce and Pratt and Whitney. All right. So I used to work on the CNC machines and I ran JM Imports sort of like at the beginning and also working with that company as well. Okay. So like most people that open a business, there's no safe transition, right? You just had to gamble and to take a gamble, fingers it. crossed that it all kind that's of works, it, yeah. right? It is, it is tough, isn't it? Yeah, you take yeah. a chance because like, yeah. there's no guarantee. Well, yeah. Bills, we've got bills to pay, haven't we? Bills, so, yeah. so you just went for it, yeah? You thought yeah, I'm going to pack in the fair, job? Actually, yeah, probably better touch base. So I did start 20 years ago, but I still was working part-time, sorry. Yeah. So, mm. and obviously when I was younger, I used to do like, I used to work in a, in a local pub doing the Friday, Saturday night, collecting glasses. Right. Sunday, even till I was 18, I was still doing paper rounds. Yeah. Just for that wow. extra ten pound. Yeah. And then I would have a job. I was an entrepreneur from young. So base. I was just working, just getting <laughs> as much money as I can, just yeah. so I could put some fuel in me. I had a Vauxhall Nova at the time. Mm-hmm. Obviously, my friends would put some fuel money, and that, that was it. Really, I just lived to earn some money to fuel my car. So obviously, uh, it says in the name JM Imports. You wasn't just building cars from 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 the beginning. No. You was importing cars, right? There was a local dealership that started importing cars in the early two thousands. Um, and it was a super that I seen and I thought, I want, I want that. 
I want a Supra. So I looked at the price tag and I thought, I'm, I'm not going to get a Supra, you know. So <laughs> what, what can I do to get one, you know? Yeah. So I couldn't get finance. Or, you know, I was just a young, young, young kid, you know. Um, so you bought a Supra, yeah? I bought a Supra, yeah. I was going to do it with one of my friends, but uh, he didn't want to take that risk. Right. So I kind of had to take a bit more of a risk because <laughs> yeah, I was, yeah. was kind of hoping like, it was a 50-50. You know, yeah, we both yeah. lose out, but yeah. yeah. So what was the idea of buying a Supra, just for yourself? It was like, for myself, really, yeah. So yeah. I bought it for myself. It was a silver NA Supra. I remember it to this day. And when it come in, it was like, wow, you know. I Dream. mean, looking back now, you're talking about 200 horsepower. Yeah. But back then it was like, yeah, yeah. The best, course. you know, it was like yeah, fast yeah. and furious car. You know, I, yeah. I felt good, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I had a car Some like Paul that. Yeah. And then I sold it pretty quickly, believe it mm. or not. Right. Um, and I joined a club called the Mark IV Supra Forum. Right. Um, I did most of my business on there. To be fair, um, I used to just, people used to start coming around to my house, and you know, bringing money in and saying, "Will you order us a Supra? Because you can get it cheaper than such and such ABC." And so, so where was your advertising? And was it like um, Auto Trader style? At or? the time, it was just eBay and obviously the forums because the forums were quite active back then. Yeah, like car forums, mm. um, pissing heads a little bit. Obviously. So, what you're saying, it kicked off off the back of you buying a Supra? Yeah, that's it. Right. So, um, I started buying more, and then I would get a credit. I got a credit card and. Just rinsed it on a on a Supra, and I just thought, <laughs> you know, I can make a couple of grand here. So, yeah. you know, I would, I would say it takes three months for the car to come. Mm. I'll get a ten grand credit card, buy a car for a grand, sell it for ten. Within three months, I would pay it back, get another one. I just kept doing that. Wow. You know, then I started getting my credit history up a bit. I got a loan. Customers would come, like like to yourself, like someone else would call. There's ten grand, get me one. People would put orders in. I would charge them a fee, and then it became a chain. You know, cars wow. were just coming and coming and coming, and it got to the point where. I had to do it full time, and I right. thought, you know, I could earn a living out of this. Is that still a core part of your business it now? It is, yeah. It's still, a, it's still a core part. Um, obviously, we're now dealing with cars like up to half a million pounds. Sometimes we get orders from customers because yeah. we've obviously been going a long time. So for people to trust us, they know we're, we're legitimate. So, yeah, right. Uh, we do a, a hell of a lot more than what we did back then. Yeah. And, you know, we do oil service, filter, check, inspection, tracking, dyno runs, you know full detail all it, in the package it, you know, is this so. because of the competition you mean or just so many I don't know it's maybe it, just to, to give a service you know to okay. give more to the people to keep your reputation up yeah um just provide the best you can i'm quite mm. fussy but you know there's always people who's fussy but we just try and give the best we can to the people most people when they think of jam imports i think they're going to think of gtrs yeah so you're saying you was uh, importing supras yeah um how have you got into being known for building these crazy gtrs so back in 2000 and Eight, I went to Japan. Um, want to have like a supercar, right. but back then it was a Gallardo. That okay. was like the ultimate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I want a Gallardo. They're still beautiful now. Yeah. When I'm 30, I want a Gallardo. That yeah. was like I like to set myself goals. Yeah. And I was like, that's what I want before I'm 30. And then when I came to like just before 30, I had me obviously my first son Leo, uh, 29, and mm -hmm. I wanted to do it then. Right. Because um, even back then I thought I didn't expect to be where I am now. Mm. Um, and it was a, do I get a Gallardo or do I get a GTR? The GTR had just come out in 2008 and I was just blown away. Yeah. I was like, wow. <laughs> like, this car, standard, 480 horsepower, yeah, yeah. just fell like you in a, in a sitting room. It was just unbelievable. Yeah. I, just, I had an RX-7 with five, 600 horsepower. I had a couple of 800 horsepower Supras, you yeah. know, triple play clutches. And yeah. this thing was just like luxury. Yeah. It was like, yeah. wow, like I need to have one. So the Gallardo went out the window. Bought a GTR. Wow, awesome. And it was officially a supercar, wasn't it? The, the yeah, Japan it was like the height labeled as well. It, as one, it wasn't didn't out they? in the UK as well. Yeah. So I think I was the third one in the UK to get one. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I got a letter from Nissan trying to say they're going to sue me for bringing it in, blah, blah, blah. Swear to Yeah, yeah. So um, I got obviously a bit worried, you know? Yeah. Um, anyway, the car was, we ended up putting miles on the car. So it was a used car, technically. Yeah. Um, nothing happened of it. I got it registered. And then I started tinkering with it. Right. As you do, you know. So, um, so leading up to that, had you tinkered with cars? Like yeah, I had, a, I had an RX-7, a white RX-7. You've probably seen as you come through with an entrance, you probably see a picture of a white RX-7 and you say, yeah, yeah, mess yeah. about with that. Not in the detail of like how we do it now. Yeah, it like with made, customers, would you yeah, do work so for customers? Like, yeah, with body kits, some carbon bits and, and that, you know, light tuning as you, as you want to call it. Yeah. And then basically with my GTR, I started pushing it and pushing it. And I think I ran the, one of the quickest quarter miles back in the day. 2009 was like a 10.8 okay. for a 4.25, which is still yeah. quick now. That was equivalent of a 4.25 back then, yeah? Yeah, I mean, uh, even a 4.25 now, it's still quick now. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, so yeah it definitely is. Yeah. Obviously, I was pushing the limits of the engine, yeah. obviously, because I know now, mm. but the engine blew up. <laughs> like, <laughs> big, you know, yeah, big for me, it was like heartbreaking, you know, like, yeah. it's like shit, you know, like, yeah. 
what do I do? So, and this was obviously, like you said, you was the third person to have one in the yeah, country. Yeah, so, so they weren't available. One out, do 4.2. I was the fastest GTR yeah. in the UK, mm. and then obviously disaster. Kind of a Blue blessing in disguise, really. Because um, that's where we go into another thing, isn't it? Yeah, the, a, there's a story, I, we haven't gone into detail, but no. did you make the prints of, um, was it? So what happened was I bought an engine from, I reached out to a Japanese company, was me dealing with Japanese cars. There wasn't anybody in the UK building these engines. Um, I'm pretty sure they just got released in America. So I bought a Jun block, a Jun engine. Yeah. Um, it wasn't cheap, it was a lot for of For people that don't know what a Jun, like, who, so, who is Jun? So Jun is like a performance tuning shop in Japan. Mm -hmm. they, they do like pistons, rods, con rods, you know, they do a couple of high speed cars. Yeah. They're like, you know, like elite level in Japan of tuning. So they're popular in Japan, yeah? yeah. People know about Jun. Yeah, that's okay. it. I decided to trust in that engine. Mm -hmm. So I bought it. Um, it came, obviously, up Obviously, I was quickly involved then as well, so putting turbos on, engines in. Everything was great, and then a thousand miles later, engine no. went. Shit so you can tell I was like, I've just spent like 30 grand maybe or something with them. Yeah. So I was like, fucking hell, this is not good, mm. you know? Yeah. Um, it's like, you know when you just feel like, what am I doing this for? I don't know what it feels like, but yeah, yeah I can yeah, imagine, so yeah, that like, 30 grand, like, Yeah, geez, it was like, you know, like, I wanted like, nice, <laughs> something nice, and I was just driving nicely, and. Anyway, so it was the first 35G, big power GT on Cyvex and making that kind of power yeah. in Europe. Obviously, I'm not going to mention which nation, but some ro royalty in the Middle East got in touch with us. Right. Um, and they had like 10 of these engines that failed. Oh, wow. And uh, they said they seen my post and what are you doing about it? So I said, oh, I got in touch with John. They've asked us to ship the engine back in. And they went, all right, okay, keep me posted with your progress. At, that, at the time, I didn't know who it was that was ringing us from the Middle East. Um, kind of left it at that. Four or five months later, um, I got a call, your engine's ready. It was an issue with the manufacturing. So I'm like jumping for joy, you know, like, yeah, yeah. yes, I got my engine. Because yeah. you just don't know what you're doing. Yeah. You, you only have four or five pulls, you say? Yeah, so it was yeah. like, well, obviously I drove a thousand miles for running in, but it was just yeah. gentle, you know, and then yeah, it was like, yeah, yeah. you know, four or five blasts and then game over, yeah. you know? Yeah, so you now got your built engine, they're sending it back, Sending yeah? it back, and then I thought to myself, I need some proper management on this, on this car. So I spoke to Ryan. Uh, who, who actually owns Cyvex, if anyone knows Cyvex. Yeah, is this the first time you spoke to him or? No, no, we, we did stuff before. Okay, yeah. right. He goes, if you sell my Supra for us, Jürgen, I'll buy a GTR and we'll develop the ECU <laughs> for your GTR. Sick. I went, put me down, let's, let's do it. <laughs> sell the Supra, somebody bought yeah. it. And that was it, Ryan started playing his magic with yeah. us. This and is the first time a yeah, yeah. ECU's so gone on your car, yeah? We got the data, obviously my car, he had his stock GTR and obviously mine was like big turbos, you know, no yeah. maths. Yeah, so, so, so what happened, so like... Um... So one day I got another call. I see you got your Jun engine and you're making good power, because obviously we, I think we did some, back in the time, I think we did like a, a 1.260 foot. Oh wow. With a GTR, a 1.28 in. Obviously the Americans didn't believe it. Ah, oh, it's yeah. bullshit, you know, like we do these first and all that. And I went to Santa Pod again, did it three times in a row. Right. So I think like the, the cotton onto it, like this can't be false. It's a, yeah. it's a, it's a verified track, you see? Yeah. So they said it was a wrong data or inconsistent reading. So and it was generally, I was pulling 1.26 foot in 2013. Wow. You know, running, I ran an 8.3 as well then. I got, again, someone from the Middle East, royalty rang us. Um, Hey Jürgen, I saw you got your new engine, you've done some good times. We're, we're quite interested in this. What happened with the Jun situation? So I said, well, with the Jun situation, I sent the engine back and they give me an engine for free. And he went, is it possible that you could arrange this for us? I goes, okay. yeah, yeah, sure. Send us your, your name, your details, and I'll speak to Jun. Because I've been to Japan a few times and I'll see what I can do. I got the details off them. I spoke to Jun and the guys in Japan said, yeah, tell them to send all these 10 engines and we'll collect them on a pallet. All his 10 engines, went to Japan. Yeah, uh, I was about to say, times. Jun, they must yeah. have, that's a good thing, right? They then warranted all their engines and they went back across wow. to the guy in the Middle East, who's obviously royalty. Yeah. Um, obviously unbeknown to me at that point still. And then one day out of the blue, the rang us and said, you and Ryan's coming to Dubai on the next plane tomorrow. Wow. We want to check this ECU out. <laughs> and I was like, whoa. So I rang Ryan and told them, <laughs> Mate, we're going to Dubai tomorrow. <laughs> He's like, what? I've got to, mate, you've got to cancel everything. We're yeah. away to Dubai, yeah. like to, 
you know, we've got a royalty, royalty connection. Yeah, yeah. Like, this is like big, you know. Yeah, yeah. So we went to Dubai. Obviously, stuff like we were like blown away, you know. Like we thought our GTO was, you know, we had, they had everything. They closed the roads off. Were wow. racing in Bugatti Veyrons and like, just stuff that you just dream of, you know. Like yeah. you just would never think would happen. Yeah. Like with me and Ryan were like bloody hell. They put us on the best hotel you can imagine. We're there for ten days. And Ryan's never been back. <laughs> right, yeah, so he's yeah. still out there. So, yeah, he works, he's still out there. He, he works royalty full time there wow. in Dubai, yeah. That so is crazy. He obviously comes back, but that, that yeah. then obviously the, yeah. the package has evolved, you know. Um, yeah. Come back home, he wanted to repay me for kind of, I'm trying to think of the right word to use, maybe his kindness or something, would you say, or doing a good deed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. you didn't have to go out your way, did you? To... Nah, so he, he placed an order for two Duke cars. Um, with yeah. um, GTR engines, 1,000 horsepower. Okay. So he said, I've seen them on an advert, I want one and I want you to do the deal. And I'm thinking in my head, you've got a Crown office in, in London, you know that deals all this, you can contact yeah. Nissan Direct. Yeah. So <clears throat> there's me, picks a phone up, rings local Newcastle. Guy, you see that car on the advert, we want to buy that. And, <laughs> Obviously, I can see the thing, this guy's mad, you know, like, <laughs> oh, it's not for sale, I know nothing about it. Uh, can you, look, I says, I'm going to send you an email. Can you get someone senior to call me? Because we've got someone who wants to buy that prototype, Duke. So a couple of days go past, nobody rings us. And this guy rings us again from Dubai, says, Jürgen, what's happening with these Dubai's? I am serious, I am such and such and such, shake. Yeah, yeah. I was like, whoa, <laughs> like, this guy's Jesus Christ, you know? Yeah, yeah. I looked at his phone number and it was all like, same digits, bar one, and I was like, oh my God, I'm dealing with someone like, mm. I was like, and I was like, let, let me sort this. I was like, yeah. Do you know what I mean? I was like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, I managed to ring another Nissan headquarters. I said to the guy, look, can you please just go on the website, have a look at me. My, this is what we do. This is the client I've got. He wants to buy that car and money's no object. And they were like, they kind of took note. They goes, right, let me get someone else to ring you because this is above him. Mm. That evening, the guy ring me and goes, Jürgen, I've had a look at your website. Obviously, so a request like this is quite wild but we can do something, but I need some evidence and proof right. that this is legitimate. Mm. So I need you to put an official like order or request. So I rang them up and the Crown Office in London Embassy sent us an official, which I've still got the, the letter on my office, mm. saying we want to put an order for two cars worth a million euros wow. or a million pound, whatever it was. Is that what they were? Yeah, 500,000 each. <sighs> so they want the two, chassis one, chassis three. And you can buy them from Nissan? Yeah, especially built through RML. They, they obviously rang me up and said, what I want you to do is, I want you to go down to RML every month, take pictures, update me, and do the deal. So I was just so excited doing the deal that awesome. I didn't care about the fee or anything like that. Yeah. I was just excited to yeah. be around that, you know what I mean? Like doing a deal and like, <laughs> you know, I wasn't like thinking about the money. Yeah, so he's basically saying, look, do the deal, you can make a drink. But yeah, you're saying whatever, you just trying to- you sort it out. Yeah, I was quite yeah, yeah. transparent as well. Yeah. I sent all the like the invoices and the, like everything, I just literally just forward, I goes, that's it. And then, and then when he did the payment, he said, Jürgen, you're gonna have a million pound in your bank tomorrow. So I got it in. What the? So it was like, next day it was in my account. So I was then I had to pay Nissan. What so the? I'm like ringing Nissan, you're going, man, the money's in my bank. <laughs> like, <laughs> I got I need to transfer it now, you know? So I transfer it and the guy's like, oh, you're, bloody, you're being serious, you know? It's been crazy. It was unbelievable, you know, like <laughs> just to, to have that experience. And then, yeah. so anyway, so I transferred the money. I think, I can't remember exactly what. I transferred like, it was like too much to transfer, like I had to ring me bank and that was just like, the bank was on the phone, what's going on? And like, you know, it was just, mm. it was quite surreal, you know? So anyway, so we paid them. He invited us back to Dubai, um, just to visit. Obviously Ryan was there, fully there now, settled in, loving life in Dubai with his villa and working for cars wow. that were yeah. levels way beyond what he was working in the UK. So yeah. he's, you know, he's obviously very good at what he does. But like them crazy clips you see on the internet, basically. They Unbelievable, like, yeah, swaps. there's just the cars. And I was, like, I was like, wow, you know, like 1200 horsepower GTR, 1300, we were like, wow. Like we was a thousand at the time, you know, we're yeah. like, they're building this one's 1800. We were, I'm just thinking this is wow. madness, you know, like, yeah. but they had the money and the funds yeah. and yeah. Obviously Ryan was doing all the development work. And then when we were there, he said, Jürgen, I noticed we haven't paid you for the, for this deal, obviously I know I paid your hotels. Ah, oh, man, I'm just happy just getting paid to stay in a two, three grand a night hotel or whatever, mm. you know, and the experience, yeah. I says, you know, I'm just happy <laughs> with it, you know? And he goes, yeah. no, listen, we're gonna have to pay you. He goes, how about I buy you like a Range Rover? I was like, <laughs> I goes, oh, look, I need seven seats because me, me missus is, uh, mom's disabled. Yeah. So I says, I need seven seats. I've got kids and a dog and I, 
I can't really, the Range Rover's not seven seat. Oh, okay, no problem, I'll send 70,000 to your bank. I went 70,000. I was like, that's like profit. Back you know? then as well. Yeah, that's, that's, that's profit, you know, back yeah. in 2011 it was, I think, at the yeah. time. I was like, that's a lot of money, that. I said, you don't need to pay us that because of who you are. You know, we'll charge a thousand pounds, you know, if you want to give us a little bit extra. He goes, no, no, you've done a good job. Uh, you've helped us out. We want to just give you that. But do one thing for me. And I says, okay, what's that? Spend half on yourself and spend half on your business. So that, that's what I did. Fuck you, no, man. I moved a little bit and I splashed out on some ramps, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. It's nice to have that bit of money and then just go, right, yeah. I'm buying five ramps. Yeah. I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. I'm going to build a little office. And that's literally what I did. The other half of money, obviously, I went on holiday, put them in the bank. Mm. You know? So at the time, was that a game changer for you, like receiving that money? Or? Oh, massive, mate. Yeah? Massive, yeah. Like I was always, every month was just getting by, you mm. know what I mean? Just paying your bills and that yeah. was it. Right. It wasn't like how it is now. We've, we've got to remember, we've got 14 employees now. Yeah. So there's a massive turnover yes. in, in wages. I mean, we're paying like 40, 50 grand every month just to make wow. any money. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's over half a million pound a year. Jeez. That we've got to physically make and profit yeah. before we earn any money. Wow. So you've got to work hard, do you know what I mean? So you've got to be on the ball, the guys have to be on the ball. Oh, so you just got this random phone call, you, 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 you yeah, that's sold it. him two cars. Just so, chatting to someone on forums, not knowing. Being nice, isn't it? Like you're saying, yeah, being humble, yeah, being a nice a man. Deed, I got a good deed back, I guess. Yeah, 100%. I mean, that's, that's how life works, I, I yeah, believe. Yeah, so I've always believed in that now. Mm. Like, do a good deed, you get a good deed back in return somewhere. Yeah. So from there, so like, would you say that that's when you started to take off? Like, you know, or, or now you I just still... I would say that, that that unit, when we had the four units, obviously I got the dyno and so on. Yeah. Because when we first started getting into the cars properly, we started customers were coming in, bringing GTRs for builds. Yeah. More experience, you know, as you go along. Because I can, I can quite honestly, openly now, say when I was 22 year old, I didn't even know what AFR was. Right. Which is air fuel ratio for anyone who doesn't know. Mm. Obviously on a turbocharged car, Ideally, you want to be 10, 9 to 12. And obviously, you now, like, with all your cars, you you, you swear by, obviously, standalone needs to you where you've yeah, got 100%, full control. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, that management. Even your McLaren now. Like, yeah. You want to know everything, what's going on. So there's no risk, basically. Yeah. A bit of safety, what, you know. Yeah, safety first. 100%. Yeah. yeah. So you yourself, like, are you have you been hands-on with, like, obviously, I know yeah, you've got so, a big team now, but... Yeah, I would you... say I haven't been hands-on now for the, probably the last four or five years. Yeah. It, obviously, I do muck in and help. Mm -hmm. um, but I've got a good team. Like yeah. now, right now, like my team's like strong as it's ever been. Mm. From like, from cleaning to office to workshop to engines. Like we have like right now my strongest team I've ever had. So, so right now, if you want a two thousand brake GTR, you want a two thousand wall. You're doing your Lambo at the moment, aren't you? Yeah. So you've got a Hurricane for the record, which is about to be built for what two thousand? Yeah. So we built it for two thousand horsepower. Yeah. Yeah. Um, obviously, we need to run the engine in and yeah. check for any issues and stuff like that, and then. The, the issue I'm facing now is time. Time is difficult because yeah. we're so busy. Yeah. Uh, COVID's played a major part in that. Yeah. And trying to keep customers happy, it, yes. it is hard. Even though we've got now 13 rams. 13 rams. Yeah, it's like managing yeah. is Deep the hardest work. bit. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Keeping so them, customers yeah. first, basically. Yeah, and obviously delays with parts and yeah. issues. It is hard, it's mm. tough. So, Jürgen, randomly, how fast have you ever been in a car? 237.5 in my GTR. Where was that? It was a VMAX. <laughs> okay, yeah, VMAX. I actually didn't do the full length, right? Because I had to do a pass, like the full, you know, the finish line, but it okay. didn't record my speed. No. Nah, so it didn't. I'm sure it was too. Sued him. Sorry. <laughs> I'm joking. So, no, it was, it was, I was actually quite frustrated. That's how bad it is, bro. Story, right. like, I, like, Romain wasn't there, and I, I literally just sent the car, and I was like, yeah. it's all over. No, 237. Yeah, I was. I Forget was, that, man. So th this one I went through, and it was yeah. way past 237. I went through wow. the finish line. Um, I came round back around the pits. So I got out the car, the adrenaline was pumping, I was sweating. And then I got out the car and I was expecting people to say, he's done the record, you know, like 240 oh was the record. No. And everyone was just like carrying on as normal. I was like, what the hell's going on? I was nearly, like, I was six gear, I was off and I was like, something. So I said, well, I can't remember who was one of my team. I goes, what did I do there? Oh, I don't think it was a good time. I goes, what do you mean it wasn't a good time? I was flat out. I was like, you know, I just like literally just gave him my oh, all. Maybe you just it, went faster than the thing could register. Honestly, I was, I was like, <laughs> But, you know, I thought I'd keep it cool. I was like, oh, fuck's yeah. sake. You know, there's nothing no yeah. you can do about it. Yeah. It's done, isn't it? Yeah. You don't, you, don't yeah. you know, it, what's done is done. For the record, your GTR, um, what is the power at the time? Or what is it now? At the time, it was probably running about 1,800 horsepower, I think. Wow. What, yeah, so crank what, or wheel? Flywheel. Flywheel, Jeez. yeah. And uh, your GTR right now, you are building it for 2,000 plus now? Yeah, 2, 3, 2, 4, 2, 5. <laughs> 2, 3, yeah. 2, 4, 2, 5. Something we'll have to do now because customers, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. yourself, you've got a 1,900 yeah. horsepower GTR. Yeah. yeah. It's, I haven't been out of my car for four years now. Um, 
I've been concentrating and focusing on the business. Yeah. So obviously I want to have a little play as well. Well, it's all out. you, isn't it? At the end of the day, that, that's my that's my passion, the cars, and yeah. I've, like you seen the passion mine in your video. How I, yeah. I was just as excited as you. Yeah, that was awesome. That yeah, day. Was the best video you've done in my yeah, opinion. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. That that passion, like mm. it's nice just to be in the driver's seat as well because yeah. that just gives you. It's almost like being like a. A football player and then become a football manager and you win the same yeah. thing it was something like like that kind of experience yeah. well yeah i, I want to get back yeah. out on it if i yeah. can yeah and and your car you've trapped you still got the highest traps being in it what was you originally about eight two wasn't you eight one eight two the best of it was an eight one eight one yeah, yeah. So, so that day we me and hamid took well, that record eight zero yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. so gm car so that's fine yeah, yeah, so, yeah it's so, all, so you, you saw so just went eight zero 174 and 179 something like that yeah yeah so mine's 74 mine, I did, mine yeah. was 185 Whoa, so you can see the power 10 mile an hour but back then we didn't have like all this fancy differentials electronics yeah, yeah. so know, yours is like a dinosaur it's a five, no, five no, years, yeah it is it basically yeah. is yeah so yeah. we you know so you're coming back out and you're just you know just oh, yeah, have a bit of fun. I, I want to try to push it a bit. Yeah. Improve from where I was. Mm. I don't want to say I'm going to do this, this, and that, but. But the idea is sevens, right? 100%. Into the sevens. Yeah. Uh, another random thing, uh, Jurgen, um, you actually blind in one of your eyes? Yeah, so my right eye, um, obviously racing again. Uh, I, wear co I used to wear contact lenses, um, got a bit of oil or something like that, and uh, I put a contact lens in. I had a, it's something called keratitis, or right. I'm trying to think, corneal ulcer, that's it, sorry. Right. Some sort of uh, bacteria that got in, stop eating my eyes. So I was in hospital for about a week. From a contact lens? From a contact lens, yeah. Oh so my guys, God. contact lens, be very careful. Yeah, so you was, uh, no, yeah. no issue before that? No, no issue before that. So I had to have like operations and again, most, not most of my vision, it's still bad, you know? Yeah. It's blurry on the right hand side. Right. So unfortunately, I've had to live with it. And like you say, it is what it is. It's become the norm. What, what can you do? Mm. Yeah, like I say, it's just, you know, I lost my dad as well, young when I was doing the business as well. Oh, so geez. there's lots of, you know, you just got to keep going, haven't you? You mm. get hurdles and you just got to keep smashing it and smashing yeah. it. So so what is life like uh, behind the business? Obviously you've got a wife, you've got- Three kids, three, three boys, kids. Yeah. dog. Yeah, so it's mm. obviously, my missus obviously a massive part of my business. Mm. Anybody that's watching this and listening, if you haven't got a support with, wife or partner mm. you, your business isn't going to succeed mm. because like you need that support don't you yeah yeah so um, and it is hard when you've got kids as well mm -hmm. so yeah she's been there from day one from when i started used to watch cars with and stuff mm. so massive thank you Lindsay, if you if you're watching <laughs> i'm sure you'll watch this um so some people don't know like every morning you have to take the kids to school and yeah so at the minute obviously different stages in life um i used to obviously my wife really takes care of the kids, yeah. the school, the food and the house. So I take care of the bills and, and what. It's a teamwork, right? Yeah. Um, so at the minute, I'm taking me, me older kid to school in the morning. They must love it. you got yeah. the you got the So yeah, so yeah. So I take the friends in as well at <laughs> yeah. times. Uh, yeah. Obviously, winding back a few years ago, I used to take me, me little boy to nursery school and go to work and then pick him up. So I try and help as much as I can, but obviously, yeah the wife and my partner she does a lot more than what i yeah what i would like to do yeah. um if i'm honest uh, i would like to do a bit more you're front line still aren't you basically you You've need to make sure that you're managing your staff sometimes and you and you probably feel the same when you see people like who don't work and spend all the time with the kids you think who's the fool me or them yeah do you know what i mean it's yeah. like actually are they are they not got the right thing where they they've got that time with the kids and you're mm. working and you haven't got as much time so it's trying to get that balance right you got it man there has to be a balance but right. obviously i had to push so hard to get like where I am now that I've had to I've had to put that work and if you don't put that yeah. commitment, like it drops off. You've got to be consistent. You've yeah. got to, do you know what I mean? You've got to keep putting. It, it is yeah. hard to explain, but anyone who's in business and watches this will understand what I'm saying. Yeah. It's like you've got to be relentless. Like, you've, got to, you've got to be obsessed with what yeah. you do. You've got to yeah. be not obsessed, but you've got yeah. to be like you've got to kill yourself. You've got to, yeah, you've got to give 120 percent for it. Yeah. If you don't like, you give 90 percent. It's not going to happen. What would you say is important to run a, a successful Someone, business? I always say um, being organised is massive key. Mm. Organise, consistent and hard work. Your three core elements you need. If you haven't got one of them, mm. you, you're not going to succeed. Mm. You've got to keep doing this. I mean, I was talking to you today about, you know, I've had personal issues and mm. I just don't post them on post Facebook. It. You know, like, I just post, like, positive stuff. So people yeah. look at me on Facebook, they might go, he's got this, he's got that, he's yeah. had a nice day. Yeah. I'm not going to post all the bad things I do because it's just, what, what, what am I going to achieve of it? Yeah. Just spread negativity. Yeah, it's just not. It's not me. Yeah. And I think you're the same, aren't you? Yeah, hundred percent. So yeah. yeah, so I have I have shit every week. Like things go wrong, and I just don't post it. You know, I yeah. just want to. 
course, positive stuff. Yeah, yeah, I get what you're, you're saying. Yeah. So, so basically, people that are looking into your life, like Jam Imports, they just think you're killing it. And yeah, yeah. We're just living in a messed up era, basically, this internet age where... But you know what I mean, don't you? Then yeah, you just it's your think, personality, like, man. Some people do generally get bad luck, don't they? And yeah. then it's like, you know, I've had plenty of bad luck as well. Mm. I've lost yeah. thousands, I've had bad deals, I've been conned, I've been scammed. Yeah. But obviously, I just don't share about it. Yeah. I just get on with it. Yeah, mate, yeah, internet era, man. It's, yeah. um, it's, it's pretty bad. So what's the story about the football owner? So you sold a car to someone that owns a football Yeah, so company? obviously, being in this game now, in the modern era with the internet, Obviously, we've, we've met a lot of high-profile clientele. Um, and I'm just thinking, I actually said this to the guy. Um, imagine being at school and the teacher goes, what do you want to be, Jürgen, when you grow up? And like, if I, if I turned around to him and said, buy a car from a, from a wealthy royal family in the Middle East, <laughs> they'd think you're crazy, wouldn't you? Yeah. Well, that's literally what, what actually happened. So we yeah. actually done that kind of deal. <laughs> like, bought it from a royal family and sold right. it to a guy that owns a football club. He buys cars from us as well, so... So the guy that owned a football club, was he interested in a car from, from those? the royal family, yeah. Okay. So we got... You yeah. the plug, yeah? The yeah, middleman. that's it, yeah. And you say you've, you've been over to Japan, bought cars. Yeah, what, what, been over what, to Japan, What kind yeah. of cars you bought then? The there? last trip was 2017. I okay. actually bought... It's a funny story, actually. <laughs> Talking about risks, I bought 19 cars. Wow. I only had the money for 10. <laughs> so <laughs> when I was there, it's was like, my guy bought one or two cars, and he's going, you got the money to buy them? Yeah, I'll send it when I come back to the UK, you know? I've got enough to, to spend on 10. Well, that was five grand times 10, or 10 times 10, 10. I just said, yeah. look, I've just got enough to invest in 10 cars. Mm. But I got there, and I just went crazy. Like, at auctions, I was just, buy this one, buy that one, buy this one. <laughs> And I just took a massive gamble, so I was there for two weeks. Um, obviously, we're in the, in, in the era, so I was posting them on Facebook, I've just secured this, I've just bought that. By the time I landed back to UK, after two weeks in Japan, I'd sold 16 cars. Wow, and how long was you there? Two weeks. Jesus. 16 cars had like, been bought. Uh, literally, you could only afford to buy 10 for stock. So literally, 16 cars were bought, I had three left over, like that I bought for stock and my stock money was still available. Yeah. So when I come back, I bought more. And it was just wow. keeping it as a chain progress. So I just kept- You pulled it off. Yeah, so just kept doing that. And <laughs> like, throughout the years, that's how I do it, you know? I'll offer a good deal and then I'll put that money, buy something else and just keep on doing it. Keep, and keep reinvesting, yeah? Yeah, just reinvest. You've got to reinvest in your business. So what do you see um, like the future to be like at JM? Well, I'm a bit worried with the- <laughs> With the uh, electric and the gas prices yeah, and all the yeah, EV, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I'm yeah. hoping you know, it's mm. a bit, isn't it? The, the world yeah, at the minute yeah. is a bit. It's crazy, yeah. It is crazy. Don't know what's going on. Hopefully, the GTRs are like you still produce to 2020. So, mm. like obviously, hopefully, I can still have 15, 20 years left in this field. And uh, no, I was about to say that you, you don't have to be frontline the way you are, right? Like you've got a strong team. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, you could kind of just fizzle out in the background and sort yeah, of let yeah, the I operation could, but run. Obviously, or... it's just not me. So I have obviously. Yeah. In my word, have fizzled out. I'll now have three Saturdays, so two Saturdays off. Yeah, that's, that, out, that's yeah. what he's fizzling out. <laughs> you know, so obviously, yeah. like Chris and Luke, because we've been in the office lately, they've been running on Saturdays, because that's, yeah. you know, so he does a Saturday or Luke does a Saturday, and then I'll do the other one. Yeah. Um, it helps massively, you know, mm. like, I just, I can go away now, and I've got a team where I can have time off. Yeah, just shut off, reset, yeah. not even think about anything. So when I have Come a holiday back. for two weeks, I have a nice holiday, but obviously, yeah. Now I've got a team where I can have two weeks off and I know yeah. the guys are going to work, no yeah. one's going to mess about, mm. you know, because like I said to you, you know, we've got to pay X yeah. amount every month. If we don't pay it, yeah. like it's a lot of money, you know? Yeah, yeah, so, 50 grand a month. Yeah, but yeah. Just, you've got to take risks, like you're saying, right? You've got to take risks, set goals. Like, I wanted one of these five years ago. Yeah. Um, I think I've been talking to you for about a year and a half about it. Yeah, I remember, yeah, uh, way before I got mine, yeah. I know you're saying you've got cars worth over a million quid a half, mm. but. I have got three kids as well. Yeah. So I've got to try and build something for them. So yeah, you've got the main cars. Well, let's not say main cars. Obviously cars you own yourself, GTRs, Hurricanes, yeah. you've got your McLaren, but you do work on a lot of other cars as well, don't you? Like, you've got a, is it a thousand horsepower TTR race you're doing right now? Yeah, so we work like in any car. If, you're, if it's petrol and you, you've got a budget yeah. and you want to do it the right way, yeah. obviously I'm not going to do it the wrong way. If you want to do it, yeah. if you're serious about it and you want yeah. to put an ECU in and you want to, 4G engine, you're realistic to what you want, mm. we'll work on. As long as it's done correctly, you don't take shortcuts, basically. No. Yeah. It's got to be done yeah. properly. We use the same sort of formula, what we do with the GTRs, you know, and that's it, you know. You just yeah. learn from the experience and uh, you kind of buy experience. No, uh, definitely not. So, uh, guys, you may have noticed that my GTR is not there anymore. I'm not sure if you can even see the space, but I've actually just had it delivered back down to you guys. Yeah. Um, I don't even know if I've even dropped a video on my channel yet, but 
the idea is obviously just give it a once over, check it out. Uh, but I do want to really try and hit this seven second quarter yeah. this year, yeah. man. You may, you may have a clutch issue, I think, with it as well, mate. Yeah. So yeah. we'll have a look yeah. at that. What are we going to do? Like, obviously, we're, we're, we're talking about uh, possibly installing NOS. We NOS, obviously yeah. talk, spoke about like turbos, but I think that's just a headache. Yeah. Like, I really, uh, like, I th am I right thinking that, like, you know, the way my car gets off is. is it's just would like, we want to lose that? The nah, way it you gets don't want to lose Your car just takes off, like. Yeah. There's no one's beat no one so mm. far today. Yeah. One, I think in the eighth out. mile, I think I'm one one eighth of a mile. I think it's the quickest. That there, the first eighth is the most important in quarter mile racing. Yeah. And then at the minute, it sounds crazy that I'm saying you lack a little bit of power. At the yeah, top. yeah. But <laughs> no, you, but I am though. You've got 1,900 yeah. horsepower. You, <laughs> yeah. you don't like any power, but like when you look against. No, but like, compared to like, like yeah, and Rocky yeah, yeah, yeah. And If you put it against a John yeah. and the terminal. Yeah. You just go, you lack a bit of power. Yeah. Like that that, that one, of a, one eighth of a mile is irrelevant, that, basically. That is the bit where you make your time up. So yeah. Well, that's why I'm able to hang in there, basically, because of how 100%, my car... 100%, because their cars don't take off like yours does. Yeah, yeah. So it, it evens itself out. So what I'm saying is, so we want to keep that one eighth of a mile how it is. Yeah, just but give we it a bit need more. To, yeah, we just need some more. Like, power at the top, yeah. So, so would NOS be a good NOS idea? NOS is a good option. Think? Again, yeah. it'll be... Well, we've had one car that we've sort of fiddled with it and tested yeah. it, but that is an option we can do. Um, yeah. Other one is, do you pull a little bit of weight off? But I think yeah. your car is such a good street car yeah. that I think you get more of a credit for being yeah, with this. It's one of them ones, I'm, it's your I'm car. I'm debating it, yeah, I'm yeah. debating it. But Just let me know what you want to do. And yeah, I, I, I'm thinking personally, like, you know, depending on how quick we can install NOS, if we go that route, uh, yeah, just just get some NOS on it. And send it. And, and I think strip it as well, mate. Yeah, okay. you'll um, do it. Yeah, I think you'll do it. So, uh, any final words, the 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 Jurgen advice of um, the year? Final words. I do want to thank everyone who supported us, and obviously, you know, it's massive that you got supporters. Obviously, I know everyone in life, you got your haters and your lovers and your whatever. Yeah. I, I do appreciate the guys that do support us. Mm. And, you know, the positive people, and you know, we we'll all have ups and downs, and I, I do appreciate everyone's support. And then the other thing I always say to people is like it doesn't happen straight away you've got to do it for a period of time yeah and eventually your luck will come so you mean not weeks not months nah, years. you've got you've got to dedicate man and you're going to get you're going to get like what's it called snowballs thrown at you and curveballs and yeah you just got to deal with it like as best you can like i've had some curveballs thrown at me in the last 10 years yeah i just deal with it finally a little plug where people can find you so yeah instagram jmm post obviously and also follow jmm post race wars uh youtube channel i really want to get callum on board with it and make his channel big you know he's a young lad he's hungry yeah uh, and i want him to, to take that to the next level and mm. hopefully one day my kids will work with him on youtube and you know because that's what they love it's so, all youtube bro. yeah so i mean that, obviously i know you're yeah. having your own youtube channel and you've got yeah, a new yeah. one as well yeah yeah so yeah, yeah that, that's what i would like also guys we have just filmed like a, a reveal of the 720s so if you want to see a dedicated video on that check the video out before if you're new obviously and uh yeah man i want to thank you for coming yeah. down here no again worries. it's been a long drive i can see why you Used to say it was a long drive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he's had to drive down. Yeah. I've done that mission four, five times. Actually, it was Callum that drove. Bro, down. it's no joke. Back. It's no joke that drive. Yeah, it's a big. What you say? Six it? hours, five hours. Six hours, yeah. But yeah, no joke. Yeah. So but no, I appreciate this uh, inviting us. Um, no, come on, anytime. Like I say, you're I shared in. a little bit about me life for the last twenty years. Yeah, um, I'm sure. People maybe next time Ricky would do a podcast on you. Yeah, yeah, That'll maybe, be good, maybe, eh? maybe. Yeah.